not act in earnest <clears throat> to ensure that our strategies to address climate change center the, the needs of those most at risk, we are not enacting climate justice. We are acting in self-interest. This is your reminder that climate justice is tetiriti justice. Climate justice is disability justice. Climate justice is LGBTQI plus justice. Climate justice is poverty justice. We are all connected and dependent on each other and the environment. My ancestors knew this, and so we should learn from their wisdom. E tika ana te kōrero i o rātou tūpuna. Ko tātou te awa, ko te awa ko tātou. We are the river, and the river is us. If we do not care for te taiao, the environment, we do not care for ourselves and each other. Fatu ngaro ngaro te tangata, toitu te whenua. People... Fatu ngaro ngaro te tangata, toitu te whenua. People will perish, but the land remains. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā rā tātou katoa. Thank you, Rick. Thank you so much. Hang on. You've got one point four two. Somebody may have a question, just to make sure. Any questions? No. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I can't read that. Sorry. Sorry. Oh. Okay, so, so apologise, it looks like a Gaelic name, which I'm not going to be able to pronounce properly. Ailey. Ailey. Thank you so much. And thank you for your forbearance with that, because I don't like to say it wrong. So I had to look a bit silly and ask you instead. <laughs> I was expecting it. That's okay. okay. Thank you. Welcome. Well, thank you. Um, I'll just start with a, a quick mahi mahi. Um, Tēnā koutou katoa, uh, tuatahi, uh, ki a taumai te aroha ngā manakitanga o te atua, uh, tuarua ki ngā mate, haere, haere, atura, uh, he mihi ki te iwi e taunei, waikato tainui, tēnā koutou, ki a tātou e taunei, kia ora, uh, kua taimai mātou ki te tautoko, te kaupapa o tēnei wā, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Ko harau te toku waka, ko maunga haumi toku maunga, ko waipawa toku awa, ko tea tanga a mahaki, ko rongo whakata o ku iwi, ko Ailey Puriwa Hagen toku ingoa. So I'm sitting here today hoping not to be another voice to fall on deaf ears. I won't give you some anecdotal story about my experience with climate anxiety, nor paint yet another somber picture of the terror and injustice happening in our world right now. Because you should know that by now, guys. <laughs> I stand here to hopefully shift your perceptions and move you out of this current state of idleness into creating real, leading climate action for the people of Kirikiriroa. I could begin by mentioning the intense heat waves in the United Kingdom, which saw a record temperature of 40.3 degrees on the 20th of July. Or I could remind you that 80% of the world's oceans experienced at least one marine heat wave in 2020. I could bring back the images of wildfires that are raging through Greece, Australia, California, even here in Aotearoa. And maybe you forgot that last year was New Zealand's warmest year on record, with this year shaping up to join it. If that's not enough to convince you, more weather records have been broken in the last decade than in any other time in New Zealand's history. New Zealand is not safe from the consequences of human-induced climate change. So don't make the mistake of believing that we don't require bold, urgent climate action now. But clearly, worldwide disaster and widespread panic, distress and urgency from scientists, civil servants, indigenous peoples, citizens and your children is not enough. How much convincing is required here? Have you thought to yourself how warm this winter has been, how there hasn't been any frost, how the ski season has barely got off, to, off the ground despite it nearly being the end of August? Those are very privileged examples of how we may be currently experiencing the climate crisis, but this is only the beginning. Our Pacific Island whānau are literally losing their homes as we speak. If you do not take radical action with this climate change strategy, and if you continue to err on the side of caution in favour of economic growth and popularity, 
Kirikiriroa is sure to be the city of the uninhabitable future. Decision makers tell us that we're inspirational for fighting for climate justice and desperately begging you to take climate action. We are also told repeatedly to go away and study something useful so that we can make a difference. But isn't that what you're here for? Most of us here have barely been on this planet for two decades. We've barely been allowed to be kids and to grow up and actually figure out what we want in life. You've had the time and you have continuously let us down. So don't wait and stop putting this on our shoulders. We're literally drowning in the pressures of trying to navigate this world with all of its trials and tribulations. So please don't drown us for good. We are swimming for our lives here. We are trying to make a difference. We are doing things and we are not lazy in expecting you to fix everything for us. All we ask is that you do at least the bare minimum to keep us alive. Is that too much to ask? So I'm sitting here today asking you to take bold, urgent, radical climate action. I'm asking you to stop waiting. I'm asking you to do what you think you can't. I'm asking you to challenge the very status quo that has put us here in the first place. And I'm asking you to keep our futures safe because I love Kirikiriroa and I want to be able to continue to call this place home and feel safe for years to come. So please don't let all of us down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, any questions from councillors? No. Okay. And now we've got Hannah. <laughs> Good morning to you both. Sorry. Good morning to you both. Okay. Uh, Tukua mai he kapunga one one kio he tangi maku. Tena koto katoa. Uh, I'm hoping that I've been enough of a familiar face over the past three years that you'll remember my name. Uh, if not, then I guess I'll just have to keep coming back. Um, yeah, or at least you can ask the person next to you. Um, in preparation for this meeting, I've been reflecting rather heavily on the messages I've shared in the past. And what else I can possibly say to get you to do what is required of you. I've come to present to this council multiple times and repeated the same message. The warming of the planet is occurring at an alarming, unprecedented rate, and re we require drastic systemic change to stop it and mitigate its worst impacts. I've been thinking about how much longer this can go on how much longer you will treat us as though we can be ignored, how much longer you will treat us as though we have no power, how much longer will you be more afraid of the changes that can prevent catastrophic harm than the catastrophic harm itself. I've been saying anything I can to get you all to join me on the fine line that is being engaged and enraged but not defeated because I believe if you knew how serious the situation is, how little is being done about it, but how much we actually can do to stop it, then you would join me in fighting against the climate crisis. And we wouldn't need to come here to say it over <coughs> and over again. I applaud those who are continuously making climate action a priority within this council, while simultaneously recognizing that what council is doing is not enough. It is not the urgency that was promised, and it continues to be un unambitious goals, not real action. So in the face of all the distress, the anger, the pain that comes with pushing for action, I remember why we do come back, why we keep showing up, because we believe wholeheartedly that we can stop the climate crisis. In fact, it is an obligation. We have no choice. Because we don't have to make the climate crisis a story of tragedy. As activists have repeated time and time again, this climate crisis offers an opportunity, an opportunity for us to heal our relationship with nature and with one another. It is an opportunity for us to reimagine what our future can be like so that it is one worth leaving for our children. A future where nature is protected, 
and people are put before profit. But to get there, we need transformative action. To be the people that stop the climate crisis, we must do everything we can to not lose the environment that sustains us. It can be done, but it must be done now. We do not have another three years. Tukua mai he kapunga one one ki au, he tangi māku. He oe anō ka heke te roimata me te hupe, ka whāngai ngā kākano. Send me a handful of soil so that I may weep over it. But when tears and mucus fall, may that nourish what will grow. Kia ora. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hang on, are there any, just might, might be a question. Are there any questions? No, but thank you very much. Um, thank you for the beautiful gift of the, well, that's a very beautiful song. Not everybody will understand the um, words, but I do. And um, it's a beautiful song and a beautiful gift to council. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <clears throat> and that brings me to put back my glasses so I can see the agenda. And we'll go on now with um, the confirmation of the council open minutes. No, not on our list. <laughs> Um, we didn't have you registered. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Apologies. I don't want to stop anyone uh, speaking who has asked to speak. So we'll go. We'll. I'll take that back. And we have. <laughs> who do we have here? Sorry. L Lauren. No, that's no, that's fine. You get the same. Lauren, you get the same time as everyone else. And apologies. I'm looking off two different lists. So. <laughs> never as comfortable as sitting on mum's lap is it no never <laughs> you gonna stay there probably not we'll give it a go <laughs> oh you want to be on my knee okay no. going to help me no <laughs> oh my daughter was just like that when she was the same age <laughs> Oh, well, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Lauren and this is Amy. Um, there's a bit of a sense of deja vu as I sit here because I've done this before and I really wish that I wasn't doing it again, to be honest. I wish that I could sit here and be singing the praises of Hamilton as a leader in the swift and just transition to a low emission city. But as it stands, unfortunately, I can't do that. So I'm here once again asking you to take action. 
I do want to acknowledge that this is hardly a council of do nothing climate deniers. Um, some really positive steps have been taken and lots of hard work has gone on over the last three years in particular. So I'm very grateful to the councillors and staff who've put in that effort. However, the adequacy of climate change action can really only be assessed on two criteria. One, is our action meeting what science says is required to avert catastrophe? And two, are we doing our fair share and protecting those who need it the most? And by those standards, we are still well behind where we need to be. I'm sure some of you are sitting there and you think that people like me and these others who are asking for bold action are naive and idealistic and we don't know how the world works. I'm not naive. I understand yeah. the obstacles. I understand that many people in the public and the business community aren't on board yet. I understand that you're juggling priorities and limited funds and that there's a lot of challenges for councils at the moment. But please don't tell me I'm naive when as a mother, I am only advocating for my children's future and asking for what is necessary, not what I want, not what we sort of think we might need, what is necessary to safeguard it. How can I do anything less? I struggle to see why it's easier to send our children to a broken future than it is to work to make changes to how we live. It's also not naive to want climate action given that everything we have and everything we love depends on us having a stable climate. You like having a strong economy? You probably need things like a stable climate and a steady supply of food for that strong economy to exist. You only have to look to the top of the South Island this morning to see that it's shoddy thinking to imagine that climate and environment are external to things like the economy. Some of you might feel like climate change and environmental matters are an inconvenience and it's not what you signed up for when you wanted to become a councillor. But change and decarbonisation are becoming an inevitability whether you like it or not. Look at the passage of the Inflation Reduction Action Act in America this month, where $370 billion has been invested in climate action. What matters now is the pace of that action. And by dragging our heels, we are not only hurting our climate, but we're risking being left behind in a world where business and trade increasingly focus on low carbon models. I'm not here to tell you what to do, because there are people far better qualified than me to do that. But I am asking you to listen to the science, to lead and be bold, and to put climate change at the heart of everything that council does. Time is not our friend when it comes to lowering emissions and we need to act now. Thank you. Thank you. And just to triple check, I also had the name Danny Marks on here. If is there... uh, I'm well, thank you. Okay, so there's no one else I've missed inadvertently. Okay, excellent. We'll move on to, um, thank you all again for speaking. Let's move on through some of the uh, quick business and then get to uh, that recommendation committee. So uh, we're now on item uh, five to seven confirmation of council minutes. I'm happy to so move, seconded by Councillor Donovan or uh, any questions on... Are you happy if I move them as a suite? Five to seven? Okay. Minutes. Confirmation of minutes. Everyone is happy. No one's saying they're not. So therefore, it's been moved. It's been seconded. All in favour, please raise your hand. Dave, you're in favour, aren't you? Dave. Yeah. <laughs> Must leave. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. If I don't see it, I'll assume it. Oh, no. um, okay. So... Um, Item eight is the confirmation of the elected member briefing notes. Also moved, seconded by Deputy Mayor Taylor. Any comments, questions? All in favour, please raise your hand. Opposed, carried. Okay, so that brings us on to item nine, which is the 12, uh, Chair's report. And uh, I just want to take it as read, really. It's um, pretty short and to the point. And we've got a lot of those things to talk about in later, later items. So I'm happy just to move that it be received. Seconded, oh, thank you, we've got Maxine just beat you, seconded by Maxine. Any questions, comments? No, yep, good. All in favor, please raise your hand. Post carried, excellent. So that brings us on to, I'm just gonna find it, in item 12, recommendations from open committee, uh, which is on page 111. <coughs> 
and it's the top recommendation from the Environment Committee on, of the 2nd of August that we're discussing at this point in time. Um, Sarah, I believe you would like to move this recommendation from the Environment Committee and, the, and Martin will second it. All right, um, anything, any questions on it? We did have a fairly full go at it at the time. Councillor uh, Dave. Yeah, I'd like um, staff to <coughs> outline perhaps, the, or the chair, deputy chair of the committee to outline the timeline for the action plan that needs to come out of this. With all due respect, this is a strategy without targets and actions in most cases built into it. Sarah, or uh, Julie, yeah. <laughs> Morning. Good morning, Ms. Okay. Councillors, um, Charlotte and I will be happy to answer any questions, um, but we're really happy that um, our climate strategy is coming to Council for consideration. I think um, the question was around the action plan the action and plan? the timelines that go with it. Am I right, Dave? Yes. So the, the key step we're doing is the emissions reduction pathway. So we're setting the broad emissions targets in the strategy for the city. So we're just commissioning the work at the moment to understand how far away we are from achieving that target with our action and with central government action and regional committed action. And we'll have that hopefully by December. We're just nutting it out with the consultants at the moment. So we're looking to get the action plan by June next year, which will be informed by... So getting the action plan by June next year will mean that it misses the annual plan next year. So it'd be a further year before any spending that might be required, as investment might be required as a result, actually gets um, approved. Yes, um, thank you, Councillor McPherson. Um, what we're hoping, as Charlotte has said, is we have that uh, pathway information by December. And so then when councillor is considering their annual plan, which we'll be doing sort of in February, March, April, that you'll be able to include that in your decision-making process and identify if there's additional um, focus that you'd like council to look at in terms of um, action towards climate change. So will you be making sort of draft recommendations, say in December, along with the first cut there? Yes. And we also, um, just to refresh councillors, uh, there was a resolution out of the Environment Committee for council also to consider as part of the annual plan process, the option for a targeted rate. So that will also be coming as part We're of the, in the In this an coming annual plan yes. round. Okay, that's good, thanks. Um, what about interim actions, there are quite a few things that are no-brainers and they don't just, uh, they're not just Temple and City Council things, it might be regional council transport issues that we, we want to push them in a certain direction with public transport, for instance. Um, are we in a position to, to make some recommendations or suggestions to the incoming council? <laughs> are you, as staff, as our advisors, in a position to do some of that while this other work's going on? Yes, so um, already, as you know, there's quite a few things happening at the moment. So council has just adopted your Access Hamilton strategy, and that has a number of actions focused around uh, changing the way we move around the city. So making more active modes of transport, but also um, public transport as well. Um, and as you also know, Councillor McPherson, we've had the opportunity to present to the Regional Council on the transport strategy. And um, we will continue to push and encourage uh, others, Regional Council, Wakatahi, um, and Central Government for those opportunities. Council's also seeking some funding at the moment um, through the transport sort of space um, for further action. Uh, so some Central Government funding that we're trying to tap into as well. Yeah, look, I was Council's representative on Monday at the, um, Monday, Tuesday, <coughs> sorry, um, at the <coughs> presentation of our submission on the regional transport um, plan, but with all due respect to the regional council, we are outvoted basically by other councils, even though the majority of transport emissions in the Waikaha are in Hamilton City. So have you got in mind some actions or strategies 
to um, go direct to government on on move or and direct to the regional council without having the surrounding councils that don't have very much possibility, even in some cases, of public transport um, it, to sort of bypass that that hideous um, structure. My words, not yours. <laughs> At the moment, I think that's something that we should start looking at, um, and we already are working very closely with the um, Access Hamilton staff team as well, because um, we, you know, one of the things we've identified for the work in preparing the strategy is that you know sixty four percent of our emissions come from transport, and it's not only the issue of people moving around in Hamilton City; it's the issue of people moving in and out of Hamilton City when mm -hmm. they come here for work or school, and particularly talking to the regional council or or the right people to make sure we get better public transport connections into the city, um, alternative options of public transport, all those things are the things that we are starting now that we have both hopefully this strategy adopted today, alongside the Access Hamilton strategy, alongside um, the Draft Hug strategy, uh, we will as staff be putting together a group of working across to make more action. So. Yeah, Just no, words, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks. That's really handy, Julie. One specific question on that front of the people moving in and out of the city, we raised briefly on Tuesday because we were only given 10 minutes, even though 90% of PT in the city is in, in Hamilton City, um, was the, the connection between Cambridge and Hamilton, the two fastest growing parts of the region, uh, where they built a nice shiny new motorway, to move cars, but haven't finished and haven't even started really the the uh, public transport uh, dedicated lane, for instance, through the Manga Tukutuku Valley, um, which we've been asking for since 2012. And that's what a Waka Kotahi issue, but also once that's built, a regional council issue with um, getting the buses services provided to be on that. So, I'm wondering if you are able to come up with some strengths some directed strategies, targeted strategies to get those agencies to be serious about, about um, actually improving that access in and out of the city. Um, I think it's 140,000 odd vehicle movements a day on the Cambridge to Hamilton corridor. If we you know, think about where the carbon emissions are coming from. Mm. Yeah, I think that's exactly what the action we need to take is not necessarily about us doing things directly ourselves, but actually we now need to go and be strategic in implementing our strategy and take it to the relevant organisations and partners and say, this is about the change we need to be seeing in collaboration with you. So we don't have that piece yet to say how we want to be strategic, but that's a really key thing. One of the, the actions to our next step is who are the stakeholders we need to be working closely with this year to be changing the way that they're thinking. Yeah. Um, and so it's not just a strategy, but our policy, which yeah. was adopted earlier in, in June, that will yeah. really start to transform the way we're providing that information as well and make sure we have the accurate data and um, decisions being made that we can take forward on that as well. Yeah. Okay. Thanks very much, Julian Shaw. Thank you. This is a question from me to follow up from Dave's one in terms of um, being able to inform our funding decisions through the whether it be the annual plan, which is next year, or the long-term plan, um, is that because you know this this work uh, is uh, ignoring the fact that we are actually got pieces of work under underway, and we are actually um, undertaking some action, notwithstanding that we've heard that it's not not uh, enough and not fast enough, which which is fine. Uh, how do we, will you be able to either complete the work in time for the annual plan so that we can make a link between the plan and the funding mechanisms, or will you be able to bring some priority actions further forward for the annual plan? Um, that is definitely our intention with this annual plan. Um, we are, as you know, a little bit restricted about um, you know, how much focus we can put on this annual plan and, and we are happy, you know, to bring as much as we, as elected members of, want to. Restricted and, in the sense of um, significance, significant yes. changes to the LTP. Yes. And of course we can do an LTP amendment if that's what elected members want to do in the annual plan year. 
Um, but particularly with the long-term plan, um, as we're starting to plan already and work towards our next long-term plan, so 24-34. And now we have our key strategies, uh, Access Hamilton, Hugs and Climate Change, along with some other strategies like uh, Nature in the City. Um, we really want to have a really clear strategic-led long-term plan so that we'll be able to understand how the things we're doing now are delivering towards those outcomes across those strategies and how are the things what are the what are the gaps that we need to address in that next long-term plan and I suppose for us it's the connection between all of those things we often talk about just transport um, in terms of climate change that's one of the really key focus areas but also the work that we're doing in our, our gullies um, not only planting, but also connecting, making our gullies connection ways, um, and also in our waste area, looking towards that circular economy um, and how we're managing that. So all of these strategies are now coming together um, to get a really clear picture for our next long-term plan. Yeah, so my final question then is, um, you know, I've often talked about daylighting and what we do do and where it sits in the policy, the strategy, and of course then the action plan. Um, and um, also that work around uh, integrating it into the other committees. I know Angela has taken the focus on environment, on um, climate quite seriously in your infrastructure committee, but I think as an organization, daylighting some of the things that we're already doing and where these are leading to, um, I can see people uh, reacting because I know that they, you, the public feel it's not enough, it's not fast enough, and I actually hear that. But I'm talking about what we are doing and the progress we are making. Um, how do we show some, is there any plans? Is there going to be some way where people can go and dip into what's being done and contribute to what they can add to it and so on? Yes, yeah, so um, Charlotte mentioned earlier uh, the work, the first bit of work we're doing is actually on our um, emissions pathway. Um, and so that is actually you know, we already have a huge investment um, planned at the moment. And one of the things we didn't do when we planned that investment is actually go, what is the impact of that investment on climate um, uh, response or adaptation? So the first bit of work we're doing is going back and looking at that and saying, here's what the impact of that work is going to be. So we can then tell that more fuller story. It doesn't just become a story about building a footpath. It actually becomes a story about building a connection to help people change the way they move within the city. And this will have an impact of X. Um, so that's the first bit. Um, we are also working on the um, our website and some uh, ways that we can share some of this information because we do understand it is a little bit buried, you know, in council documents and not everyone wants to read, you know, a 150 page long term plan. Um, so yes. Just, yeah, just to add to that, like you were mentioning, um, Mayor Paula, around the getting into all the committees. So what we're also trying to do is talk about the climate change outcomes related to other things that are happening. So when we're talking about transport story and going out to our community to engage on spe specific issues around transport or borders or other things, talking about how that relates back to climate, be it emissions reduction or adaptation. Um, and then on our website, as, as Julie was saying, we're really trying to build a place there where people can interrogate our data that we do have a bit more, share it more broadly so they can understand what the emissions of the city are and what we're then going to be doing to respond to them. So we're trying to create a place to share that information so others can access it and use it uh, to understand what we're doing. Mm. Okay, thank you. Any further questions, councillors? No, we'll go into debate, beginning with Sarah as the mover of the motion. Oh, just just a thought. Sorry, Sarah, mm. on the fly. I was thinking of seeing if you would would um, um, include an amendment that uh, required of staff to identify some priority actions for the annual plan. That was all, but I'm not quite sure how that would work. And I don't want to throw it. I'm sure, the <coughs> mover and second will be included. Yes, so they report back with potential actions for the annual plan, so that that you know. That there's no creep in. Yeah. Yeah. Does it, do you understand my intent? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We may have moved something similar previously in the Environment Committee, but but there's no harm in uh, emphasising it if in case we or in case we haven't 
making sure that's so definitely set in. So happy to add that in. Yeah, can you just... Yeah, we're just going to get it up. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, that may have been the previous one. We're happy? Yeah, I'm, yep. I'm happy. Okay. First, <laughs> firstly, ngā, ngā mihi kia koutou. Thank you uh, to everyone who has come today to speak, to listen, and to support this strategy. Um, I'm always really happy to see the chambers full um, and to see uh, people really interested in what we're doing. So it's fantastic. Thank you. Um, I, I also want to thank our staff also for the huge amount of work that has gone into this strategy. It has been a rather long journey and longer than we would have liked, but um, a huge amount of thinking and work has gone in uh, behind this. Um, I do feel a sense of deja vu today because uh, almost exactly three years ago, on the 8th of August, I was sitting in the audience in the chambers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. there were some interesting screenshots of my face when Gary Mallett was speaking. <laughs> but at that time, we were watching councillors debate whether or not to declare a climate emergency. And there, were still at, there was still at that time um, a, a degree of scepticism as to whether climate change was real or human-induced or a problem or whether we needed to do anything about it. Um, fortunately, today, uh, I, I trust that everyone around this table understands and agrees that this is a huge problem yeah. and that we have to do something about it. Um, I guess the question, however, is whether we're willing to take action fast enough, and that's what I'm hearing today. Uh, Ultimately, the measure of our success will not be how good our strategy is or how good the action plan is that follows this. It will be whether our community can see tangible results, whether our community can use cycle lanes safely, can have a bus that's frequent and reliable, can charge their EV easily without going to three different charging stations to find one that's free. Um, whether there are trees that provide shade, whether there's shade over our playgrounds, whether our infrastructure is designed in a way that will withstand uh, the changes in our climate, heavy rainfall, droughts. This is the measure of success. So today I'm, I am proud to be uh, approving this climate strategy and I thank everyone for their support to date for this. Uh, but the next term will be the test of our leadership. Let's make the next three years the years of delivery where we deliver action to implement the strategy. Lauren's submission hit home for me because a number of years back, um, a number of years back, when I took my court case against the government to challenge its ambition on climate change... I'll move an extension of thank time you. for one minute. It's it's um, all in favour? Thank, thank you very you. much. You're very kind. <laughs> 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 um, what, what ultimately made me do it was I thought, I want to be able to look in the eyes of my future child and say, I did what I could. And, sorry, seeing Lauren sit there, um, with her child, uh, I think it hit home quite strongly because you can forget easily actually what, how uncertain our future is ahead for our children. And this is the reason why we are doing this. And so um, thank you for reminding. Thank you.
I'll, I'll leave it there, but thank you also for the extension of time. <laughs> thank you. Kia ora. Um, what have I got? Who have I got next? Sorry. Councillor Wilson, I think you're... There. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mayor Paula. I think that was the first time in three years we've had an extension of time. So, uh, uh, and, and it was probably uh, very, very appropriate. I think sometimes people have extended their own time, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's Doesn't modest. mean you're going to get it. No, I, I have no doubt that's not going to be the case. Uh, I'd like to just momentarily reflect on um, Councillor Margaret, who's no longer here with us who started uh, as chair of the Environment Committee and had done a lot of very good work uh, in, uh, in that year and a half. So I don't think we can get to the stage without acknowledging her. And look, I, I also have to acknowledge, obviously, um, uh, the chair and the deputy chair. And sometimes I get confused who's actually the chair and who's the deputy. But I have a feeling Sarah has been the, the powerhouse behind the, the, the last year and a half's leadership. Look, I, I, I fully support the climate change strategy. Um, I don't think anybody of sound mind could not now reflect that the world is facing um, an incredible crisis and we've got to do something about it. Uh, I'm reminded um, of a number of global uh, examples. I'm particularly interested not only in New Zealand, but also in Canada uh, with a number of um, uh, uh, both flooding and, and wildfires and the country having to, to try to manage that. The reality is this is, however, just the start. And if I could constructively say, the real important next phase is early next year when actually we have to put the action plan and fund it. Uh, so I have no doubt that this will go through unanimously today. I mean, I, I would be astounded if it doesn't because it's already gone through the Environment Committee unanimously. But the real test, the real test will be when we have to actually allocate real money to the action plan. So this is the beginning of the beginning and the real test will come very soon. Uh, and I, if I'm back, I look forward to trying to work to ensure that happens. Uh, if not, then I'm sure others will, will, will fly that flag. But thanks for the work you've done, Councillor Martin and Councillor Sarah, and of course, Margaret, um, uh, and uh, it's the beginning. And it's a reminder how slow this process can be three years we've been trying to get to here um, but the next test is early next year thank you councillor Wilson. councillor hamilton thanks mayor paula i think i'm somewhat humbled i'm assuming that one of the speakers andrew was referring to my speech three years ago um, but probably for not reasons that um probably she would like but I think a little point of clarity. I remember at the time we were we were looking to declare climate emergency, and the, the mayor at the time was pivoting and saying, let's declare climate urgency. And we were sort of splitting hairs. And I took issue with the whole thing because it was to me it was tokenistic. There was no roadmap underneath it. There was no plan other than going out and saying, Yeah, we declare. Um, today's a little bit different. Today provides a bit of a roadmap with a pathway and it provides some tangibles and some action plans. So that's something I can get in behind and support and go, it's not just tokenism. Um, my only caveat though in reading some of the policy is the basic and detailed assessments that are going to come out for either mitigating or adapting to climate change. I think it's really important, that's the devil in the detail, that we road test that with the aspects of the community that that will affect, that it's not just done as a desktop analysis, but bring those people on the journey, get their buy-in, get their support, and then what you have is something that's not just a compliance, but you've got um, a buy-in and, and a support from the community at large. Like anything we do, that makes it so much more powerful and impactful. So that would be my, my only ask. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton, Councillor McPherson. Thanks. Um, I loved uh, Councillor Hamilton's analogy just then to roadmaps and road testing. Uh, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of that, but not much alternate uh, transport uh, <laughs> investment put in front of us. And I say that semi-jokingly, but it's a bit like when you put up a case to Waka Kotahi, they'll give you money for design, but not for construction. And that's the situation we're actually in, in reality around this council table at the moment. If we don't have 
a very quick and very uh, extensive action plan arising out of this in a hurry. It's going to be no more than the coffee table books that I talk about elsewhere uh, in this council and in this region. Um, we ne actually need to have some action. I think people understand that point, uh, and I'll be very much looking forward to Councillor Wilson, my friend here, championing some major investment in climate action in the new council. I'll be watching that from the sidelines because that's what's going to be needed. Um, no worry, worrying about... Uh, whether we can afford it or not. It's how can we afford not to do it um, then. Um, look, I'm disappointed that it's taken so long to get here. We should have been here where we are today two years ago, to be honest, um, to be realistic. Um, and I think one of the things that's been lacking, and I'm going to put this back on the community a little bit, it's not just the people that get elected to council that make sure things happen in this city. It's also the whole community. We need the sort of pressure we had this morning, and that's, as Sarah mentioned three years ago, we need that happening all the time to remind the people around the council table what their responsibilities are, not just once every every three years, unfortunately. And there have been some people, some individuals in small numbers that have been coming to us, but we need more than that. Now, I'm a practical person. I want to see specific proposals that actually address this issue in a meaningful way, particularly in the transport area where I am quite involved, have been quite involved. Um, I want to see action on buses from the regional council on decent bus services that provide a genuine alternative that are fast, frequent, reliable and affordable. Uh, we don't have that from the regional council at the moment. They dip their toes in the water, they get scared uh, because it's a little bit warm and they back off or just sort of hold the toe only half in the water. We need to be pushing them very hard. It's a very poor system we have in New Zealand where regional councils in most areas made up of rural councils primarily or councillors um, are actually in charge of buses that operate in metro areas where you can make a real practical difference to transport emissions if you had an aggressive policy. So I, I say to the incoming council, get active in that area. The, probably the last thing I'll just say to wrap up, Madam Chair, is um, three years ago, who would have thought that uh, southern England was facing 40 degree plus temperatures, that Westport was having it, was in the middle of its third one in a hundred year flood in one year. Um, just think of those sorts of examples and think about what we really need to do. Thank you. Councillor O'Leary. Um, Mayor Paula, yeah, like Councillor Sarah, I also remember um, three years ago, it feels like a lot longer than that, where there were some uh, different bases around the table that are no longer here, and listening to them dig themselves and label themselves as climate change deniers. And I remember thinking, we're not here to represent our own views, we're actually here to represent others. And just like Councillor Sarah said, the decisions we make today or any day on this chamber, they're not for us, they're for her generation and they're for her son Leo's generation. And if those decisions are good enough and bold enough, they should be for Leo's children as well. Look, it might not feel like it to the community and we've failed uh, if it doesn't, but we have actually come a long way in a short period of time. This three years has been the most enjoyable for a variety of reasons for me on this council. One of them has been because of the work that we've done with climate uh, to combat climate change. And we are working on a lot of projects. Unfortunately, this council has had to tidy up a lot of things and do put a whole lot of things in our LTP and fund it and then do the strategy after. And we've done that with Access Hamilton well, so it's a little bit but about face. <laughs> um, look, climate change is a major issue and in the transport sector, we know um, that with the new refreshed access Hamilton strategy that we signed off last week, that a key principle in there is about creating a low carbon transport system. Um, in the, as a member, Sarah and I are members on in uh, Councillor uh, um, Jennifer, who's also in the audience of the Waikato Regional Council Emissions Reduction 
uh, working group and we are working on uh, reducing by a minimum and we actually had a discussion the other day that it should actually be 50% from the transport sector in the region. So that work has been done. Fantastic message from Minister Wood last week. Still don't have the detail, but super excited. That will give councils the ability to own and operate their PT services, which will give us incredible flexibility and be able to enable us to be able to act locally. Um, recently, well, actually it wasn't, it was during lockdown, we got 17 million from the government for water stimulus package. And two weeks ago, we uh, had the blessing of Mangaiti Gully, which put in 70 thousand plants and there were other projects in that that directly uh, addressed or will address climate change. There's an image in this particular strategy and I really really like it and I'm going to hold this council to account and it's just it's in the cartoon images of a little shop it looks like on a street and it says climate change resource centre and I think that's fundamentally what we're missing is a massive resource centre that will educate people. I don't think being a climate change denier is a generational thing. My mum turns uh, 80 next year and she is all over climate change and we have long, long discussions about it. And anyone that is still in the framework of denying, and I'm sure nobody in this room today is, only needs to think about those residents uh, overnight in Buller, <coughs> Westland and Nelson who are being evacuated from their homes. And I can't imagine uh, what they're going through. So I look forward, as Councillor McPherson said, to a very bold action plan, but it must accompany appropriate funding because if we don't fund things, things don't get done. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor... <clears throat> Thanks very much. Um, firstly, uh, thank you to the uh, Environment Committee Chair and Deputy and to staff uh, who have uh, done a lot of the heavy lifting behind uh, the presentation of this strategy. Um, also, thank you to our submitters today. Um, you've got a great deal of passion tenacity and, and real commitment. Hannah, I heard you talk about being a believer and that it's your obligation. Well, um, I'm also a believer and uh, I've got the family uh, beside me whom I need to act for, um, along with the residents in our, in our city. Um, you don't have to look far uh, outside of your own neighbourhood to see the effects uh, and the impact on people of climate change. People who, um, if asked, would take action um, if they were enabled, if they knew how and if they knew what. And so that's our job to help them to understand that, I believe. I see this strategy as being the blueprint to enable uh, that change, the change that you want to see. Um, I'd really like to see a printed copy of that, despite the, uh, the difficulty that we have in using paper a lot, right, and the impact that that might have. But actually, I think a printed copy um, means something. Uh, something more than just being able to access it online. Uh, it's tangible and it, it's, it's there to be able to reference it to. I'd like that to be uh, in every councillor's kit. And I'd like it to also be uh, handed out and, and used by prospective councillors as well in this election. Um, I'd also like that to be backed up by a really uh, robust uh, induction process so that nobody's left in any doubt about how important it is for us to take action and to give effect to the action that we want to take. Um, uh, I, for one, uh, will be championing the funding that needs to happen in order to get the actions needed at the pace needed to be able to deliver. So uh, if it's a matter of putting your money where your mouth is, uh, I'm happy to champion. Kia ora. Thank you. Councillor Naidu Rove. Thank you. Um, first, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's come in this morning on a rainy morning. 
and um, thank you for speaking. Um, I also want to acknowledge fellow Councillor Sarah right next to me for her amazing work on the Environment Committee. Um, she is a powerhouse <laughs> and, um, and she is constantly reminding this council of, um, of um, uh, ways of, um, you know, mitigating climate um, action. I um, also wanted to acknowledge staff. I know that you've worked really hard, especially during times of COVID, to get this together um, and with a lot of pressure from us. So thank you for bringing us to this point, even though it is um, slower than we'd like. We know that it wasn't always in your control. Um, and, um, you know, yes, there, there is urgency to get stuff done but if i've learned anything over the last three years it's how slow council actually works um to even get to this point is is a milestone in itself because um it's a very slow machine and um you know lots of meetings and about meetings and about more meetings um so to get to this point is a huge achievement um, although it is, like you said, slower than we'd like, but it's not for a lack of trying. Um, I am completely supportive of the strategy and the action plan. Um, and I do think, yes, we do need investment to get the actions underway. Um, I think the challenge that we'll face is um, bringing everyone along with us on the journey. Uh, we can spend millions of dollars on plans and strategies and actions and changing stuff, but if we don't change or invest in changing the mindset of people, then we'll get nowhere. So uh, I'll be looking forward to how we tackle that challenge. Um, during the Environment Committee, I did share a, a story, so I thought I'd share it again. Um, we, um, I have family in South Africa, as you all know, and um, they faced uh, quite a massive flood about eight months ago um, where their water was cut off. And up to this day, they still haven't had their water restored. And that goes to just poor infrastructure planning around climate mitigation. Um, they've got young kids and, you know, our age, and um, they live with barrels of water down their hallway so they get water between 10 p.m and midnight every day where they fill their barrels up and they do their laundry and and they use that you know for flushing the toilets during the day and doing their dishes and they're buying drinking water and this is real right now you know you call them up and this is just their everyday life so this is what can happen if we don't plan properly now um, so i just wanted to share that thank you thank you councillor kish councillor pesco yeah, thank you, Chair. And look, I'll be supporting the strategy today. Um, I want to recognise um, the work of my colleagues and the staff on achieving the progress that we have through the Environment Committee um, over the last three years. Um, uh, I, um, I think we, of my three terms around Council, this has been the, the most focused one to, uh, to set in motion um, at reasonable haste the the outcomes that are needed um i'm 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 sort of questioning the, you know the word we was used a lot this morning in terms of the submissions and i've always believed that we are not just the elected officials who have to some extent some power in making decisions around this table but we includes all of our community and i acknowledge uh, past speakers who have mentioned that in order to achieve success we 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 need to take all of the community with us because every single thing that the community does uh, to help mitigate against climate change is part of that win that's that's needed. No one this morning pointed to any projects that the council has or is currently undertaking that does not recognise the need to improve change and make progress on um, mitigating the way that living on this planet is changing the environment of the of the planet. Um, so I think it's important that. Um, this council is, move, and it is, moving along with a strategy, not only in terms of the community, but also in terms of how we operate our business uh, to, to mitigate against climate. 
very few of you would have been around in the 1980s when the uh, fluorocarbon debate was being held. Um, perhaps myself and my, my colleagues sitting next to me will remember that. But I did teach to undergraduates before my, um, before my time on council uh, a, a study that we did on that and how, uh, how that was mitigated. And look, it was very, very slow. We had uh, countries around the world who were uh, testing uh, nuclear bombs in the atmosphere, and it took years to convince the French, uh, the British and the US in the southern Pacific area to uh, stop that nuclear testing or at least take it under underground, whether that was any mitigation. It took years for people to replace their refrigerators, um, and it didn't take quite so long for the uh, fluorocarbon that existed within uh, the, um, the aerosol containers uh, to get those changed. But it did take years, and we did measure that progress. So, you know, maybe we need to be a little patient in terms of how we roll this out and how we, how we get progress. Um, so, um, look, my time's up. I'm waiting for an extension, but I probably, I probably, I probably won't get one. Um, but, um, you you uh, may finish your point, but we have extended the time in an interest. Go. Okay. <laughs> so, so I think go, going forward, the emphasis is on we, and we are the community, not just the leaders. Uh, while we might help lead that, um, we need the community to go with us. And we need to do that in everything, not just the immediate climate effects, but uh, altering our roading network to accommodate cyclists and buses and so forth. It is uh, a, a way, uh, it's a need uh, that we take the community with us rather than telling them what to do. Thank, Thank you. you. Councillor Donovan. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Paula. Uh, I'll do my bit for the climate and keep my speech uh, reasonably short so that Councillor Pascoe can have had some of my time. Um, so uh, thank you to the presenters, um, supporters, and of course staff for all the work you've done uh, around this. I will be supporting it. Um, as a member of the Environment Committee, I, I take my role uh, very seriously, and, and Sarah will know that over the last little while I've become somewhat of a um, backyard environmental activist of, of sorts. But um, one thing I would say is um, to Councillor Kesh, I'm still new and I still believe that everything will happen reasonably quickly. <laughs> so um, please tell me that's not true because <laughs> I'm still a believer. <laughs> um, but we are, we are the preservers and we are the custodians and it takes a lot of bravery to make big decisions. And I'm proud to say that I'm part of this council that's going to be uh, making uh, you know some significant contributions going forward. Thank you. Martin, would you like me to go? Martin, would you like me to go before you, or you want to? No, no, I'll just go Okay, all right. Yeah, thank you. I'm just going to. I'll take Councillor Donovan the rest of his time as well, so that that will be good. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Um, I I just want to, if I may, I'm not going to be particularly quotable today. I just want to take the opportunity and thank you. Um, for the acknowledgement uh, of this journey in terms of the elected members and the late Margaret Forsyth. And I want to um, have her here, if I can say, in this audience today, if I'm thinking of her with us. And also I want to obviously commend your worship, um, Mayor Paula, for establishing this committee uh, at the beginning of uh, this term. Uh, Councillor Thompson mentioned that she was sitting in the audience three years ago. Um, I'm not sure if she was a candidate then. Uh, and there's often a saying that uh, the student of politics and lobbying, um, and she has thanked me for my assistance, but this is the example where the student, in her case, became the teacher. And I want to say that she has made an incredible contribution to the city of Kirikura Hamilton over the last three years, amazing contribution in this area. And I absolutely, I've learned a heap. I've learned a heap. Uh, I am technically the chair of the Environment Committee. Uh, some, would, some would say the co-chair, probably a co-chair. Others would say um, you got it the wrong way round. But thank you, Paula, for giving me this role to take over from, um, <clears throat> from uh, Margaret Forsyth. Um, I also um, want to just a little bit reference to the fact that um, there are going to be new councillors around this table. There's going to be a minimum 
of six new elected members. And I, forgive my bias, have a hope that we will have some more Sarah Thompsons join us, if I can use that terminology, in terms of people who are absolutely committed and place front and centre the issue of climate change, environment, and a future for our grandchildren. And that is because obviously this issue, this fundamental issue is going to be um, front and centre. Having said that, I acknowledge Ewan um, for reminding us of the key challenges that we're going to be um, ahead of us. Can I just take the remainder of time I have, and I'm also using Councillor Mark Donovan's time, um, <clears throat> to just quickly thank uh, the team, if, if you would allow me. Um, and it's not in a sense of self-congratulations, because the wonderful submitters, organisations such as GoEcho, the heroes like Professor Bruce Clarkson and others, uh, I acknowledge Regional Councillor Jennifer Nichols, they will remind us again and again it's been the amazing work and ongoing challenge and work in the community which have been represented by the submitters today, and I do acknowledge them. But I particularly want to, if I may, thank my um, Environment uh, Committee colleagues. I uh, can't hear, have a hearing issue with the bell. Naidu Rolf, um, <coughs> uh, Naidu Rolf uh, Councillor Donovan, and uh, particularly Mungai Norm Hill. I also want to do a big shout-out to both... Um, uh, Angelo Leary and Dave Mack for their work in their key committees, which have been partner committees in this area, and their incredible campaigning, and, and Jennifer will attest to this, their wonderful interventions at regional council, but over the years they have both uh, I've been an incredible advocate, and particularly Dave Mack, after 20, in 24 years, so has been a campaign from, up, from way back. My wrap up, <laughs> my wrap up, my wrap up will be um, my wrap up is simply this. I also want to um, sincerely thank the small and dedicated team consisting of Charlotte, Poppy, and Julie, who have worked with our wider staff for their incredible conscientious acumen and passion in this area. And I'm hoping also, as we know during our budget discussions, that that team is going to be joined and, and grown. Okay. And Kathy as well, absolutely. Um, so I just want to really say that this has been a genuine partnership between the elected members and an incredible staff team. Without further ado, I hand over to you, Your Worship. <laughs> Thank you. Gosh, don't you always hate to debate after Martin when he speaks with such passion and integrity and then you think, well, you've said everything. But <clears throat> look, um, I, I just want to say that last election, before the last elections, our community were clear in their call for bold action. They were. Um, I deliberately set up the Environment Committee to put a stronger focus on both sustainability and climate. And I do want to acknowledge at this time uh, the Environment Com Committee under your leadership and prior under Margaret's leadership um, for embracing, uh, embracing this. And thank you so much, Martin, for your guidance with Sarah. Sarah, Sarah uh, has been the leader and driver of this climate action space and of course um, no one can doubt her authentic passion and we've seen that here today. Yep it's been slower than I would like, it's been slower than we would have liked. I'm not going to make excuses and say it's all to do with COVID and so on and so on. It's partially to do with COVID and it's partially to do with staff resources and a whole lot of other things we didn't necessarily have total control of, over. But there again, the Environment um, Committee advocated strongly. They said, get good people around this, get them as quickly as possible. We want to make this progress. Um, so we have made tangible strides, and I am grateful for that being acknowledged. Uh, we've got a very bold program around the greening of our gullies, the restoration of our gullies, planting into Waifakareki, other green spaces, and moving from the 2 to 10% ecological uh, spaces is insignificant. We have also made <clears throat> um, some internal progress with the way we run this building of our energy and uh, efficiency within our own building and other things, um, providing opportunities for staff to not come in private vehicles and a few other initiatives. 
We have uh, worked towards greater walkability, walkability and cycling in our city. And Angela has gripped this up with a review of Access Hamilton to put even greater emphasis on that integration of transport modes. And I'm really pleased with that. Um, going forward, there is much more to do, much, much more to do, but this is going to rely on a couple of factors in my view, better integration across all the committees and all the work programs, projects of council. Uh, and, uh, you know, we've got to make that happen in the new structure. So I look forward to supporting Sarah and Angela in a piece of work that they've begun around water sustainability in our new urban areas and that kind of, that kind of thing and how we build uh, when, we're when we're building new parts of our city, how we do them to the highest standard. So I'm looking forward to that work. What I will say is um, thank you to the community for keeping us honest and participating in the democratic process because quite often we see people uh, not doing that and remaining quiet with their voices. If you don't use your voice, you can't be heard. I'll just say that. That's how democracy works. Um, I just finished with one thing. We can't do it. We actually can't do it all alone. We can't do it alone. But we have a lot we can to do, we can do, within our responsibilities. We, that includes transport. It includes how we build our city going forward. And it includes how we enhance our green spaces. So there are definitely things. I'm looking forward to just casting my glance over to the team. And I was talking with Lance before. I'm looking forward to some tangible projects that we can move into the annual plan so we get um, a start on what we need to do to go forward. So that's me. Sarah, write a reply. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ewan and also Mayor Paula and, and uh, Councillor Martin for, for mentioning Margaret Forsyth and her uh, contribution to this. Um, it was with her support that uh, we kicked off this strategy because before this we had two action plans um, and actually we were really unhappy with ultimately those action plans because they only summarised essentially what the council was already doing and we wanted something forward-looking that stretched us, that set a target and created a pathway forward um, to inform our next upcoming budgets so that we were shaping the future rather than just letting the community know what we were essentially had already budgeted to do. So um, I want to acknowledge her work there. Um, uh, there was a, a comment around patience, Councillor Rob. Um, I do note that the uh, first agreement around global agreement around climate change was around 1990, which is like the year that I was born. Um, so, and I'm not that young. I've got quite a lot of grey hair. So, um, we, I think people have been pretty patient. Um, and, and, and ultimately, uh, the wheels do turn slowly, like Kesh has been the biggest frustration um, in becoming a councillor to realise just how painful the process is. But in saying that, um, I, it, and also I'd say that we have had a lot of disappointment from funding partners like Waka Kotahi and central government. Uh, they still haven't come to the table to even fund their share, their 51% share for our cycling and, uh, and walking projects. Um, and so there, there are massive frustrations there and I'd like to see them come to the table um, urgently. But I would say that we can move faster. Um, when we had our first COVID response uh, plan, that was uh, extreme, uh, that was put together in like two weeks or something. And uh, I think when we're determined to act with urgency, we can. Um, so I, I put that out as a challenge to whoever is sitting around this chamber um, in October. <laughs> Um, finally, I'd just like to, I guess, uh, say that a few of the councils around the table have commented, please keep coming back, please submitting. I, I want to let you know that your voice is really important and you play a really important role in driving change. So please do keep returning. When I worked as a lawyer up in Tamaki Makoto, I came I went to a number of council meetings um, to submit on, uh, to push them to work faster on climate action. And I wondered, you know, is there any point to this? But then one of the sitting councillors one day came up to me and said, 
please keep doing this and bring more people with you because it's making a difference. And so I want to send that same message that we need the community to work alongside of us. We need to do this all together. Um, so that, thank you again for being here today. Thank you. We will now go to the vote on the thingy, the board. Are we? Is that taking you by surprise? Oh, we'll do it by hands. All uh, has been moved, it's been seconded. All in favour, please raise your hand. Opposed? Carried unanimously. Council. Thank <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you, and um, I hope that's um, given you some hope in your day. And uh, the best of luck to I see a number of candidates for the elections in the audience. Best of luck to you in your endeavours. Um, we're going to take a, a, tea, a tea break till quarter past. Bang on, but do come back in quarter past. Bang on, everyone. Um, so thank you. <clears throat>